Hey guys, it's me, my face, and all of my stress and my anxieties. No happy dance because I didn't even bring a beverage up here. I don't even have any coffee left in my cup. This is where I am right now. If you're new here, my name is Andrea. This is a channel about cross stitch and stuff. Um, I am not having the best of a time, but we are going to dive into some cross stitch and feel better. We are just going to dive in. The first thing that I worked on is and Heaven and Nature Sing. Uh, you may remember at some point I was going to head out to Stitch New England to get some cocoa. Um, Weeks Dye Works. I did not do that, so I made like zero progress on the the beastie itself. But I did manage to get I want to say like this tree and maybe this tree done, or like that tree and that tree. If I had watched my previous video. Did you watch my previous video? Because I don't think I watched it. Um, I would know which things I filled in, but you are seeing my before picture. You'll know what I did. Um, I like working on this. I do. In fact, I wanted to work on it more, but I really wanted to work on the animal and I don't have the thread for it right now. So hopefully, you know, when my world straightens out, I can get what I need and get it going. The next thing I worked on is God bless us everyone. This is actually a primitive needle. Ooh, I do love primitive needle. Although I, I have to say this is probably not one of my favorite primitive needle projects. Um, I, I, I find it tough to get excited about it and I'm not sure why. I love the fabric. I love the threads. I love the weirdness of the pattern. I'm not loving, I know you can't probably see it very well right now. Um, I may put a still picture in. The coverage for the black, that's um, Weak Style Works Coal, I believe, um, is not fantastic. And I like a lot of coverage. I would rather it look crowded and clumpy than sparse. So I think that's where I'm probably not getting as excited about this um, project. Although sitting here, it looks pretty good. I will also say that like this moon, which looks like it might be showing up better on the camera um, because yeah, why would two things work the same way? Uh, blended with the fabric a lot. So I may end up going around that with um, some backstitching just to make it pop out. Uh, there's also a couple of what I'm assuming are snowflakes in that same color, which is Honey Bunny from somebody. Classic color works. Um, so I may change the color of those. Speaking of Prairie Schoolers, the next thing that I worked on is my 2020 um, Prairie Schooler Santa. And I made some progress on his face and the start of his hat. I believe the beard wasn't finished last time we chatted, so I've got that done. All in all, I am very pleased with how he is coming out. Um, how do I want to finish him? I don't know. I mean, I think I can honestly say that I want everything finished as a flat because I just kind of like being able to prop them places. I, for some reason, am incapable of making a flat fold or not fold that doesn't look bazonkers. It's a technical term. Um, I have a tough time, I have arthritis in my hands, so I have a tough time cutting like the, the mat board and the sticky board and the any other thing I have to cut. I have a tough time in general. I just have a tough time. The next thing I worked on is Moonwatch. This is from somebody. It's on the side there. I did not, I, I didn't bring my laptop or my tablet over. I don't have notes. I'm sorry. This is a thing from a magazine. So I don't remember the designer, 
but I had like the whole middle part done. So I just did the, the border. So I am almost done with that. And then all that's left is the back stitching. I think I have decided that I want to do the pear tree that comes with this um, on the same page in the magazine. So I might as well do that one. There are two more in another issue that I think I am going to look for because I think they would look really cute all together. And they're nice and small. I didn't think of them as this small. Um, so I think they might all look nice arranged together in my head because that's where everything ends up. The next thing I worked on is one of my favorite things to work on. This is Alley Cats from Barbara Anna Designs. And look at them. Look how cute they're coming out. Oh my God. Stop everything and just look. Look at their hats. This was my favorite part of working on this is their little variegated hats. And those are just DMC. And I'm sorry, but if you're a Firefly fan, Fire, Firefly fan, you know that that is a cunning hat. You know. Uh, this only has one more little kitty to finish, and then there's some details around them, like some fish bones, and I guess they're singing, so there's little musical notes, and um, and then this will be done. I kind of want to put this up somewhere, either a flat or in a frame or something, because I just love these little guys so much. Oh my God, is there more? Yeah, there's more. <sighs> the next thing I worked on is Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. This is from Carriage House Samplings. And I am almost done with this block. Um, I think if I just could have stayed awake for another couple of hours the other night, I would have finished that block. I just, by the end of the, I just couldn't anymore. I just couldn't. Um, so probably the next time I stitch on this, this block will be finished. And I can start down here, which is a block that I believe has three coffins, two or three coffins with skeletons or something. Okay. I didn't look that closely, but it looks like a lot of browns and tans and psh, I'm in. I'm in. The last thing I worked on is Templar Prophecy. This is from Long Dog Samplers. And I filled in some things. Uh, do I know how many things or which things? Not really. I know I worked around here. I worked down here and like there. Um, Lindy Stitches, Stephanie over at Lindy Stitches had the right idea when she just left this not work off. It, it looks good. It looks really good. It's beautiful. It is tedious. Oh my goodness. I cannot, I know I've mentioned this with long dogs before. If you can get into a rhythm, like when I was stitching up here, um, if you can get into a rhythm and a pattern, you can stitch these fairly quickly, though, those sections. I cannot get a rhythm with this, uh, this knot work. It's just, it's just fiddly enough that I don't trust myself to know what comes next. So I have to consult the pattern a lot. I am also working with an obstacle that I myself created. Um, I have, I have many skeins of 310, many skeins. And for a long time, I was not doing the loop start. So I would cut them to lengths about yay and use two strands and, you know, start by tucking under or something like that and stitch. Now I use the loop start and those lengths are way too short. But can I remember to find a new skein and re-divide it into longer lengths to use with this project? No, no, I cannot. Every single time I sit down to do it, I go, oh, I needed to cut some 310 and I didn't. It's fine. I'm just going to use these tiny little lengths. And do I go back to using the tuck rather than using the loop method? No, I just 
thread my needle every 17 stitches and this is what I do to myself. Editing Andrea here. Just to let you know, I just cut some very long lengths of 310. We're all going to be okay. Back to the video. So that is all the stitching I have done in the last few weeks. And looking up at my little counter, that took like 10 minutes to tell you about. Yes, I'm rushing. I am. I have a little bit of haul. My two Threads of the Month clubs came in uh, since the last video, so we can breeze through those and then we'll have a little chat and then we'll be done. This is Floss Frenzy from Fat Quarter Shop. This is the May 22 club and it is Neutral Paradise. Paradise indeed. This is Arrowhead. Angel Hair, Skinny Dip, Conch, Sand, and Oak. Um, I think of all the packs that I have gotten, this is the most Well, I mean, they're neutral, but they're all pretty much the same color. There's like four in here that are the same color. It's fine. They're going to get used. Um, but yeah, for a, a neutral, I would have liked to have seen maybe some more grays um, or just more a variant of, of colors. You know, not everything is beige. I'm beige, but you know. I also received my far more exciting um, Gentle Arts nest egg from Three Owl Threads. So this is Old Covered Bridge, Otter Creek, Morning Glory, Nutmeg, Blackboard, which is looking very blue to me, but my light is not fantastic today. Apologies. Oatmeal. Come on now. Lexington Green. Old Hickory. Onyx. An Ohio lemon pie, which I do not want to stitch with, but I do wish to consume an entire pie just for me. Andrea, aren't you on a diet? Hush, hush you, hush. So that is about it for the stitching updates. I haven't started anything new, even though I keep trying to. I just can't. I am in that place where I, I can't. So I have a lot of things kitted up, which is good because that means when I am ready, I can start some fun new things. Um, but just not ready yet. So a few updates. Um, my father is still in the rehab. Uh, he is, in my opinion, not thriving there. He had some, some serious setbacks over the past, I want to say he's been there now five weeks, four or five weeks. And um, in that time, he's had COVID, so they couldn't do a lot with him. Um, he had um, uh, an infection, so he had to be on antibiotics. That took a lot out of him. Couldn't do much with him then. So that was like a, another week gone. Um, then he had a, a blockage. Uh, that took them days to take care of and he was miserable through that whole experience that took a lot out of him so when they finally got all of that taken care of I want to say he had three or four really solid sessions with the um, physical therapists they got him out of bed um, you know he gets himself dressed with the stick and a little help 
they uh, walk him around with the walker. You know, one day he did 10 steps, one day he did 40 steps, one day he did more than that, you know. So there was this feeling of progress. And then that kind of just stopped. And the other night we went to visit him and he was absolutely not himself. He was not fully aware of his surroundings. He wasn't talking like himself. He wasn't behaving like himself. Um, he had developed kind of a twitch. Um, it was extremely upsetting to the point that we actually at one point said to the nurse, you know, should we be gathering family? Should what? We seem to be the only ones panicking. And I, I, I guess I'm learning that staff for a rehab is not like a hospital staff where when something happens, it's just not the same type of reaction. And maybe that was what was giving me a little more anxiety as I'm sitting there seeing my father, a completely different person in this bed and nobody seemed to be panicking. And that was causing me to panic. Um, I don't know. Maybe they knew best because we went back the next day and he was like at 95%. He was still talking a little, but he was there with us. He was watching the television. He was understanding what was on the television. He was um, chatting with us about rational things and was just the guy we knew. So we said, okay. Maybe it was just a bad day. Maybe the rehab people are used to seeing things like this. And that's why they didn't get upset because they figured he's just having a bad day and the next day will be fine. Today, he seems at maybe 80%, I'm told. Uh, I haven't seen him yet today. I'm actually going to get ready to go about four o'clock tonight and see him and then swing by my sister's so we can compare notes because she saw him this morning. And, you know, while he was there and communicating and chatting, he was also kind of drifting off at times. Um, not drifting off asleep, just sort of drifting off. Um, so it's tough because, you know, the other night when we saw him, we thought that that, that condition was kind of making decisions for us as far as Will he ever be able to go home, which is his absolute intention? Um, should we be looking at assisted living? Should we be looking at um, nursing homes? So we kind of thought that a lot of decisions were sort of being made for us. And now that he is, you know, pretty much on an upswing, now everything gets back on the table. And, you know, when we meet with his team next, we just honestly can't predict what they're going to tell us because... Every time we think they're going to say, you know, we're sorry. We just don't think that he can be mobile enough to live on his own again or that, you know, physical therapy is going to keep helping him. They tell us the opposite and they say, you know, we really think he can benefit from this. And, you know, they say, Bob, what is your plan? And he says, I want to go home. And they go, OK, you know, they obviously can't talk him out of it or anything like that. But now everything gets back on the table. And so that's why these past few weeks have been very, very stressful and very difficult to sit down and, and record a video. Um, but I'm actually pretty impressed with the amount of stitching that I got done through all of this, because if you had asked me, I'd say, you know, no, I didn't get to stitch anything. Um, I think that is, is, back to being kind of my place to hide is, you know, once I tuck myself into a chair with my stitching around me and everything, I know that I'm there for the evening. Um, I'm not planning on, I don't have to pack up and go over there. I don't have to go to his house and collect 19 random items and check the messages and return his phone calls and then head over. I, I kind of like know I'm done for the night. I'm guessing. I don't know. It's not good to be your own therapist. Don't try it. Um, go to mine. She's brilliant. Um, but yeah, I mean, that said, none of that has helped with my depression at all. Uh, none of that has helped with my anxiety at all. 
Um, so it's tough. It's tough. And oh, by the way, still working a full time job. And I have a huge project that just started that I have like a whole bunch of training for that I need to find time to do. So it's been a lot. So I think I am probably I am. I'm never going to say I'm going to go to, you know, videos every three weeks or every four weeks or every two weeks or anything. I think I'm always going to shoot for two weeks. And if I don't make it, I am I am not going to, you know, I'm not going to punish myself for that. Um, I'm also probably going to give myself more permission to do these on a random Wednesday when I don't have anything happening rather than saying, well, I can only do it on Sunday or I can only do it on a weekend. You only have time to, you know, Andrea, you can record it on Monday and edit it on Wednesday and post it whenever it makes you happy. You can do that. It doesn't all have to happen on the same day. Only in your head does it need to all happen in the same day. They repealed Roe versus Wade. And I don't have anything constructive to talk about with that. Uh, usually, you know, I would have my little sign up here. Um, I think a few weeks ago, it was um, my body, my choice, my vote. And that seemed empty. And I don't want to... I don't want to reduce my outrage to slogans and signs and things like that. So I am still at the enraged portion of the program. So I'm not going to rant and I'm not going to go on and on and on about um, bullying and, and bodily autonomy and other things because you, I can't do it effectively in a cross stitching video. Um, but just, you know, to know that I am part of the shared outrage of, uh, of that decision. I think with that, I am going to let you go. I am going to try to edit this up and then go see dad. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your likes, and even the dislikes you guys. But thank you always for your comments. I read every single one of them and I do try to respond and they mean the world to me. Um, you are my community and I am thankful for all of you. I will talk to you all soon. Bye guys.